Today we get an early start as we trade the truck and the trailer for wings and head across the country and explore the Rockies doing the Icefield Parkway in Alberta. We'll visit some iconic hotels, some epic waterfalls, a glacier, and lakes with water so blue they don't look real. We cross the provincial border for a quick look at British Columbia. We visit Canada's first national park, and we take to the skies in Banff. All that and more. Stay tuned. Trailer traveling is coming up next. Our flight is at 6.30 a.m., so it's still dark when we get to the Ottawa International Airport. So why is it daylight, you ask? We got bumped to a later flight due to an expired ID, but we'll make up the time. As the clouds clear, we can see the Dan Forth Airport below. Then we land at Pearson. Yep, stay over in Toronto. That sandwich looks good, but no time for lunch. On to our next flight. on the ground in Calgary. Let's get our rental and get on the road. Quick stop at Walmart for supplies. And then it's time to get out of the city and head for the mountains. they are off in the distance. Let's get off the highway and start exploring Banff. Oh, there's a road sign. Let's stop and take a picture. First stop is at the appropriately named Surprise Corner because that's our first stop on the trip 
the view is quite a surprise. Let's head up to the lookout. Here they have signs describing how artists came here for inspiration and how the Canadian Pacific Railroad opened up this new frontier. An amazing view of the Fairmont Banff Springs Hotel. And there in the distance, those small white specks are the Banff gondolas. We'll be there in a few days on our way back. Check out the topless tour bus. And our next stop is right through the trees and across the river. So let's get back in the truck. This castle-like building straight ahead is the Banff National Park Administration Building. It was built from 1935 to 1936 and is a recognized federal heritage building. Not much further now. Here we go. Welcome to Bow Falls. Bow Falls is a waterfall on the Bow River located just before the Bow River joins the Spray River. The falls were featured in the 1953 Marilyn Monroe film, The River of No Return. And a nutchuck watches over the cold glacier water. Oh hi little guy, this is a black-billed magpie. They're beautiful and probably well fed, they're not afraid of people at all. One more selfie and then back on the road. It's starting to get late and we need to find food. We have a three hour drive to Jasper where we are spending the night. Look at the light shining on that mountain. Incredible. All right, let's get on the highway. Let's pull over for one last stop of amazing views before the sun has gone completely. As we pass Lake Louise, 
we drop onto the Icefield Parkway into complete darkness. See you tomorrow. Good morning from the Lobstick Lodge in Jasper. Let's get going. This morning we're starting off at Malang Canyon in Jasper National Park. Ooh, check out the elk buck on the side of the road. All right, let's get to the canyon. This is Grisette Mountain ahead, elevation 2620 meters or 8600 feet. view from bridge 2 is spectacular. 51 meters deep or 176 feet straight down. The same height as the Canadian side of Niagara Falls. Let's check out this area behind the restaurant. Very nice. Okay, off to the overlook. <coughs> Personally for me, not quite as spectacular as the waterfalls, but a great view of the town of Jasper surrounded by Muggin Mountain and Pyramid Mountain. After a short drive, we're at the fifth bridge. Fifth bridge gets us close to the fast moving cold water. It would be easy to spend a whole day in Jasper, but this is a short trip and we have a lot to see. We'll have to come back and check it out some other time. We missed the Jasper sign last night in the dark, so let's get a picture here. And through the gate of Jasper National Park. I bought the weekend pass, so we're still good.
here's our first of many stops today on the parkway, the Athabasca Pass Lookout. <laughs> Athabasca Falls is a class 5 waterfall with a total drop of about 80 feet. While they're certainly not the highest falls in the area, they're one of the most powerful with a flow of 4,000 cubic feet of water rolling over the edge every second. Yeah. This abandoned channel down here is where the water once flowed. What a tremendous force of nature. The falls, I mean, not that guy. Okay, let's get to our next stop. Let's pull over here just past the glacier and Goats Overlook. Look at all that snow. This looks like a cool place to pull over for an epic photo. Next stop, Sunwapta Falls. Did you see that one-way sign? Neither did I. I always do one of these. Sunwapt is the stony Indian word for turbulent river. Oh. This is a class 6 waterfall with a drop of 18 meters or 60 feet. Here's where the water flows to. Look at it hitting the rock wall. We got 30 minutes though. There's a trail on the other side of the bridge. The rocks have been worn smooth by all the foot traffic and they're very slippery. The rocks are so slippery from all the traffic. Sorry, I could not resist the slow mo.
and here just like the rocks the traffic has worn the ground to the tree roots. A Porsche, a Mustang, a Class C camper, a rental's in good company. Back on the road. so many viewpoints along the way. Let's stop at the Stutfield Glacier Viewpoint. Hey, you know what would be fun? Let's pull over for an epic selfie in the middle of a busy highway. Next stop, Tango Falls. Parking area here's a little rough. All right, let's do the slow mo again. And the sun is starting to come out. On the right is the Columbia Icefield Skyway. We'll be back here a little bit later. What an amazing view of Nigel's Peak. Let's pull over, I want a photo. Okay, let's pull over again. I need to touch that water. Coming right now. It's so windy here, you can't even hear what I'm saying. Very cool. One more photo from down here beside the highway. Okay, let's get to the Discovery Center. Look at this view from the parking lot. Let's get out to our bus and out to the ice field. And then the third and final eco region is the Alpine, the one we're in front of here. The tip tops of the mountains, anywhere from 2100 meters plus. Above the ride the itself level. is very quick and informative about the region and the glacier itself. Snow and, ice. and one of the biggest questions I get when I'm doing my ice explorer tours is are there animals that walk along the glacier? No, there's not because there's nothing up there for them. So bighorn sheep and mountain goats will go up there to sleep or protect their babies from predators. However, they must come back down to the subalpine to... Check out these custom-made tractors to go out onto the glacier. 
And here we go. You see that bus way out there in the glacier? That's where we're heading. But to get there, we have to go down a 35% grade. It's a little steep. And here's where the gravel ends and the ice starts. Look at those guys out there hiking on the ice. And my camera died, so all we have is video from my phone. The Athabatha Glacier is 350 meters deep, that's 1150 feet, making it taller than the Eiffel Tower. It's 15 degrees Celsius colder up here than at the Discovery Center, and that doesn't include the wind. Look at that tiny bus on the road over there. And after about 25 minutes on the glacier, we're going back up the steep hill. So with my camera dead, we missed the bus ride, but here we are at the Columbia Icefield Skywalk. Built in 2014, the glass floored Crescent Skywalk that is suspended 280 meters or 920 feet above the canyon below. suffer from vertigo you might want to look away. Okay. While the views are spectacular it's very overcrowded and we're here in the off season. This was probably my least favorite part of the whole trip. Okay, let's take some photos with the glacier in the background. The peak on the right side is Mount Snowdome. It's the hydrological apex of North America as its meltwaters flow to reach the Arctic, Pacific, and Atlantic Oceans. running behind we need to get to Lake Louise let's speed things up a little bit here's the view from the waterfowl lakes viewpoint I'm still trying to charge my camera at this point for Lake Louise so no video I'm pretty sure we're not supposed to pull off on that side of the road, but oh well. This is the Big Bend viewpoint. And all the way down there is where we're going. There's the road. And I think this is Mount Murchison, but I'm not sure. It'll still make a nice photo, though. And this is Mount Thompson on the other side of Bow Lake. The gatehouse here to the left marks the end of the Icefield Parkway. We're almost in Lake Louise. And back on Highway 1. Welcome to Lake Louise. Our hotel for the night is down the road to the right, but there's still so much to see before checking in. 
Lake Louise is surrounded by these mountains in the distance. From left to right, Mount Fairview, Mount Victoria, Mount White, Mount Niblock, and Mount St. Perrain. Lake Louise was designated as a World Heritage Site in 1980, but it's been reserved for public use since Banff National Park opened in 1885. And here's why. It is spectacular. But to get the best view, we're going to have to work for it. This two and a half kilometer trail mm -hmm. takes us along the side of the Fairview Mountain up an elevation of about 200 meters to the Fairview Lake Lookout. I find the trail is pretty good though, it's clean. Yeah. But look at this view. Oh, yeah. We're far. Just watch this thing there. Hey guys. <laughs> How's it going? And that's where we started, way down there beside the Fairmont Chateau of Lake Louise. We stay up for a bit, but then we start heading back. At first I thought this tree was bats. Not sure why all the leaves have turned black. Maybe for Halloween? With a black mask on. Okay, I wanted to try the new hyperlapse on my new DJI Osmo. Kind of cool, don't you think? Hmm. Back down to the lake. What an incredible view. Let's try that hyperlapse again on the way back to the truck. The plan is to get to Lake Moraine, but we're running almost 45 minutes late and it's starting to get dark. As we pass the turnoff for Lake Moraine, the road is blocked because even at dusk the parking lot is full. So our plan for tomorrow morning is to go to Emerald Lake in Yoho National Park in BC, but we decide instead to get up early and come back to see the sunrise at Lake Moray. Let's see if we can get to Emerald Lake before dark. Oh, and here's the border for BC. Let's take a photo. Oh, now you're in BC. Wow. BC. Yes, we're in British Columbia. This hill goes down forever. going down. By the time we make the turn into Yoho, it's too dark for the camera. We pull into the parking lot for the natural bridge on the Kicking Horse River and we manage a few photos but it's still way too dark for video so good night. Good morning from the Lake Louise Inn. The plan this morning was to get to Lake Moraine before sunrise to find a parking spot but I guess everyone else had the same idea, and the parking lot is already full before 7 a.m.
We're disappointed, but we're going back to our original plan and going to Emerald Lake in Yoho National Park in BC before heading back to Banff. Do you remember any of this from last night in the dark? Down and down and down we go. Here at the bottom of the hill on the left. Did you see it? Let's go back. There, on the side of the road, an elk. Let's pull over. And what's this on the right in the ditch? Another elk. That's enough. It looks like he's moving on anyways. Let's continue. It's not long before we're in Yoho National Park. Look at that mountain. This would make a great place for a selfie. RV parking. I wish I had the trailer. Look at the color of that water. Dad, vas-y, ma troisième fois, mister un peu, ça descend, là, tu sais. Veux-tu avoir ton téléphone? Oh, I think it's on video. Yeah. We take lots of photos. Let's see what the water looks like underwater. A little cloudy with all the silt from the glaciers. All right, let's continue. And let's stop back at the natural bridge for some better photos in the daylight. All our photos last night were too dark. And here's a chance to redo another photo at the Welcome to Alberta sign. Last night it was dark and there was a transport truck parked in front of it. Goodbye BC, we'll stay longer next time. Off to Banff. Oh, look at the Banff sign on the right. Should we stop? Looks like a train will be crossing soon and we'll have to wait anyways. Let's go. OK, 
Okay, let's cruise through Banff. And we are once again crossing the Bow River Bridge. Here we are at the Caves and Basin National Historic Site where it all began in 1883. The cave is the lowest of nine hot springs on Sulphur Mountain. It was considered by the indigenous Stony Nakoda Nation to be spiritual and that the waters had healing powers. Three workers from the Canadian Pacific Railroad found a hole and descended into the cave. With their discovery, they built a small hotel and tried to cash in on the discovery, so the government had to step in and reserve the land for public use, making this the area's first national park in 1885. Okay, let's go. Unfortunately, the cave is so dark that the camera really doesn't pick up very much. And the water in the cave is full of sulfur. And if you don't know, sulfur smells like rotten eggs. The smell in the cave is intense. Yeah. Okay. Don't see much. And up there is the hole where the workers first descended. In the 1920s, this area was a huge swimming pool filled with warm spring waters, but it was closed in 1994. There are still pools that you can swim in, but higher up the mountain. Wow. Yeah, I'll take a picture. Big difference in that. This water smells really bad. Even though we're outside, you can still smell the sulfur. These stairs bring us up to the original hole in the roof of the cave, which I did not video. And while the views are spectacular, there really isn't a lot to see up here. It's Canada's first national park, so I suppose it's a must-see, but there really isn't a lot here. Can't beat the view though, eh? Can't beat the view. No, you can't beat the view. We're on a tight schedule, so time to go. Our reservation for the gondola is at 11.30, but I'm worried we won't have enough time to make it back to Calgary, return the rental, and get on our flight. So we're going to have to try to get in early. Hi. Where are you going? To the gondola. Do you have a reservation? Uh, I do. I'm going to try and bump it up, but it's at 11.30. Okay, yes, sir. You can go to the second exit. Just remember that you have to show full vaccination. Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> turn right, then turn right. Their website says they open at 11, so let's go. 
arrive at 1045 and they're already running. And let us go right away. Cool. Hey, you left your camera in the car? The gondola cars hold four people and it ascends 2,281 meters or 7,486 feet up Sulphur Mountain in just eight minutes. I don't know if it was just because I was in a hurry, but to me it was not very clear where we were supposed to go. We hung out here for a bit before we realized we needed to take the elevator if we wanted to go to the observation deck outside. Very confusing. But we made it. Hey, would you like to have breakfast here? Listen to that wind. There's the parking lot far below. And there's a bear statue made of mirrors up here. Time for another selfie. Just listen to the wind on the south side of the building. I really thought I was going to lose my camera here. It was beautiful, but we really need to go. Coming down the mountain. Yeah. No, no, but can I see it? Oh, yeah, I can see it through the middle. Where do you feel me, là? Fait que je peux monter ça aux enfants, à quoi qu'on monte? Gondola. La roda, hein, que ça se fait avec les bonnes. Woohoo! It's a riot, eh? The roller coaster is done. Just look at this old gondola in the gift shop. I wonder if it's real or if it's just a decoration. And with that, our time here is done. There's never enough time to visit everything. We'll definitely need to come back.
we have an hour and a half drive back to Calgary, followed by a four hour flight home. The mountains were so beautiful, it didn't really make sense to video any of the flat, boring ride back or the plane ride in the dark after all the beauty we've seen here this weekend. And that's it. We covered 1,700 kilometers in a little over 48 hours. We'll have to come back and explore more. If you like this video, please follow us on Instagram and Facebook and subscribe to our channel and share with your friends. Our next adventure is just around the corner.